What's up guys, it's Mitch here from the DIYRecordingStudio.com and today we're going to be having a look at the latest DIY mic preamp that I've built. It's from SoundSculptor.com and it's a tube based preamp and I'm really excited to show you the build videos so let's get into it. So recently I purchased a whole bunch of mic preamps from a company called SoundSculptor and they're a French company who put together these kits that you can build and they're very DIY friendly. And by building these mic preamps yourself, you can essentially build a mic preamp equivalent to something like a Neve or a uh, LA610 or a whole bunch of other famous mic preamps before a much cheaper price because essentially they're packaging up all the components and then you're doing the labor work yourself. And I already have a video showing the build of the MP573, which I built recently, and it's based off the famous Rupert Neve designs. So if you've ever seen a 1073 preamp, this shares those same components and therefore that rich Neve British mic preamp sound. And if you wanna check that video, I'll put a link up here. So this build project that I'm about to show you from Sound Sculptor is pretty exciting. It's a bit Bit different to your normal mic preamp in that a lot of mic preamps are either transformer based or solid state transistor based but what sound sculptor did on this design is base this mic preamp off a famous American tube based preamp that's right it's a tube based preamp so when we think of tubes we think of warmth and we think of saturation and we think of all of these nice sort of rich terminologies and it's hard to describe what a tube sound really is but these are the terminologies that most people use and the preamp this is based off is this famous tube mic pre designed by Bill Putnam and it's the LA610 and they are now owned by Universal Audio. So if you've seen one of the LA610 uh, single mic preamps, you will know what we're talking about here. But basically what Sound Sculptor have done is put this into a 500 format and hopefully we get some of that amazing tube sound that you can find in those classic consoles. That would suit things like bass guitar and vocals and maybe overheads and ribbon microphones because if you've been watching this channel, Channel, you all know how much I love ribbon microphones at the moment and tube mic preamps with ribbons are supposed to be a really special thing so I'm really looking forward to using that pairing so before we get on to the build if you haven't already please hit like and subscribe down below and if you've got any questions regarding this preamp build or any of the other things that I do on this channel hit me up in the comment section but that's enough from me let's get into the build so first up you want to separate these little uh, PC boards that are attached to the side uh, cover board um, that you get originally and then you want to start filing them with a very uh, fine file or some sandpaper if you've got some fine sandpaper that would do the job as well and that's to make sure that the little PCB boards when they attach to the main board that they attach nice and flush against a board and all your connections are nice and neat then I like to place my components all out in a nice and neat chronological order and you can see that I've actually labeled the various resistors, I've checked them and written in their resistance there. And that's important to make the job a lot smoother and a lot quicker uh, when you're finding components and then inserting them on the board. It just makes it a lot easier if you have all this stuff organized. And it's one less thing to think about as you're inserting these components into the main PCB board. The last thing you wanna be doing is checking the resistance of stuff as you're inserting. It just makes the process a whole lot quicker, a whole lot easier, and make sure you don't make any mistakes. And then you wanna get to your main PCB board and flip it to the B side. And this is where we're gonna start inserting our first round of components. And we're gonna start with the smaller components first, like these diodes here. And when I insert my components, what I use is that forming tool. You can see that red forming tool. It just helps you um, neatly bend the legs of each of the components without putting any stress um, where the actual component attaches to the legs. So you get these nice neat bends and they'll fit neater on the circuit board. And then next you need to start inserting all the resistors. So We've already checked their resistance and written it on the little tags, but then you might want to double check that you're inserting them in the right place, uh, referring back to the assembly guide and the PDF uh, that SoundSculpt give you. And as I put each of these resistors in, I slightly bend the legs to hold the resistors in place. And then when I flip the board, 
they're not going to move away from the board too much and then I can solder them quite neatly. And what you want to do is just solder the easiest to get to resistors first and then snip the legs and then move in on some of the previously harder to get to resistors and then just chip away at it bit by bit and take your time. Next component you have to install is this IC chip that sits beneath the bank of resistors and you want to make sure that you discharge any static electricity before you handle it. You've got to be very careful with that. And then when you insert it in the board, um, the legs might need to be bent out a little bit to fit it neatly on the board, but you want to be very careful when you're trying to bend those out um, because the legs are quite fragile and you don't want to damage them and they could snap off quite easily from that um, IC chip. And then once it's inserted in the board, you can solder the legs for that component and you just want to be careful not to use too much solder or uh, hold your soldering iron there for too long on the legs because you don't want to overheat that uh, IC chip too much. And then there's a couple of little ceramic capacitors that you need to insert on the board and they're pretty easy. You just put them in, bend the legs a little bit like you do with the resistors and then flip the board and then solder those in place. And then there's a little transistor that you need to insert on the B side and the tricky part about this is it needs to sit flat on the board so you need to bend that down towards the board and you also want to make sure that you get the orientation right so you want to make sure that the flat side touches the board not the curved side of that transistor and then once that's in place you can solder those three legs on the board there and then give them a snip and then last but not least for the B side is this little LED light and basically it is so you can check your signal when the preamp is actually functioning and these can be a little bit tricky because you've got to bend them in a way that allows them to sit a little bit up off the board so they're not completely flat on the board otherwise the alignment will be out when you attach the face plate so you've got to bend them a little bit and then um, have them sitting off the board a little bit so what I did was solder one leg and just check the orientation and then once I knew that it was raised off the board enough, I soldered the other leg and then snipped them. And then it's time to work on the A side of the board. And once again, you're going to start with the diodes. And like with all diodes, you want to make sure that you have orientated these correctly. And there's always a marking on the board and on the diode itself for which way it needs to be orientated. But you want to make sure it's orientated correctly. Otherwise, you will have issues with your signal. And once you've put in the rectifier diodes, you need to put in the smaller diodes. And then, like always, you just want to bend the legs a little bit. And I use a forming tool, as always, to get them in the board. And then you can flip the board over and then solder the legs. And once they're soldered, you can give them a snip. And after that, it's time to do the A-side resistors. And there's quite a few of these components to do, but it's important just to remember to take your time, do them neatly and just make sure that you're checking each of the components off as you go on the PDF. And then once you've inserted all those, you can flip the board back over and solder all the legs and then give those a snip. And then the next component to install is this IC socket. Now you don't need to install the actual IC yet, but you need to make sure that this orientation is correct because there is a certain way it needs to be on the board. And then what I do is, is I hold the socket in place with one hand and then get a little bit of solder and make sure it's held in place um, just by soldering one little leg and then I solder the rest of the legs once I've checked the orientation is okay. And that's a bit easier way to get it on the board. And then next up are a bunch of test pins and you can see me pushing them in with a bit of electrical tape on my thumb because they can be quite hard to insert on the board and they're actually breaking the skin on my fingers so <laughs> I um, used a bit of electrical tape to help push them in and then some of them will go in nice and flush and um, basically be firmly in the board but some will tend to fall out as you turn the board over and solder them so I taped them all down in place to basically make sure they didn't fall out before I soldered them and then I flipped the board and soldered them all in place. And once you've done this, there's a bit of a raised spike that you need to snip um, so that 
pins are flush to the board on the uh, back side there, just so they don't come into contact with anything later on um, and potentially short any circuits. And then next up is this six pin header, and that'll be to connect the DI uh, board um, for your guitars and bass guitars and stuff like that. And what I do is, is once again, hold the component, solder one leg, check the orientation on the other side of the board, then flip it back over and solder the remaining legs that are left to do. And you just want to make sure that it's nice and straight because it's going to be important that it's all nice and vertical and straight when you attach the DI components to this. And then there are a few small ceramic capacitors to attach to the board. And the board has provisions for two sizes for these. So you've got to make sure that you orientate them into the right inputs on the board. And then there's a couple of film capacitors to add to the board as well. And generally what I do with the film capacitors, because the legs are quite short and tricky to bend, I will um, put them in place and then I'll place some electrical tape over them to hold them in place when I flip the board. So I went ahead and did that. And then last but not least, there are these little polymer fuses that kind of look a little bit like uh, the ceramic capacitors. And I put those in place and bent the legs to hold them in place in the board. And then I flipped the board over and soldered each of the components in place and then gave all the legs a snip. And then the last component for this part of the video is this electrolytic capacitor and it's got to be laid flat on the board. So you want to make sure that one, you get the orientation correct. Um, so the plus goes in the plus hole and then you want to lay it flat on the board and then what I did was was just cover it with some tape to hold it in place, flip the board over, solder the legs and then give them a snip. And that's the first part of three stages of building this board. So that's part one wrapped up of the build video for the MP566 tube mic preamp from soundsculptor.com. If you haven't already, please hit like and subscribe. I'm Mitch from the DIYrecordingstudio.com and I'll catch you soon. <laughs>